My friends, we all need good friends, true and faithful friends, those people who will stick with us through the darkest moments in our life, those people who will even stand for us and against us <laughs> if we're not being true to ourselves, true friends to ourselves. We need these type of people. Maybe you can think of a person or persons who have been those type of friends for you. I can think of one person in particular, a person who I didn't know really well. We were school friends in high school together. And she, let's call her Grace, was this type of friend to me. You see, I was 17 and going down a path of shadow and of darkness. I was living up to the worst aspect of my last name, Wilding. I was becoming wilder and wilder, sowing my wild oats. And one day, Grace sought me out at school. She came to my English class and saw that the teacher was not there. And she motioned me to come out of the classroom. And I'm, okay, wonder what she wants. So I said, hey, Grace, uh, what's going on? And she said, hey, Eric, uh, can I talk with you for a few minutes? And she said, Eric, uh, I heard what's going on in your life. And I, I heard what happened the other night at the party. And I'm concerned for you. I think that you're not only going to hurt other people, but you're going to hurt yourself as well. And for the next few minutes, she was a real friend to me. I didn't know her well. But she, like no one else at that time, nor few people throughout the rest of my life, ever spoke to me this way. From a deep compassion, from a deep concern, from a deep selflessness, not worried about my ridicule or the ridicule of others, because when I told my friends later about what she had said, they, ah, goody, goody. And, you know, these friends were going on that same path with me and only wanted me to join them in their dissolute living in harm and self-destruction, but grace, no. She was true to me. She was Jesus to me. Jesus said, greater love has no one than the one who lays down his or her life for his or her friends. And that's what she did. She laid down her life, seeking me out, ignoring my ridicule and scoffing, and turning away because I was thinking to myself, yeah, whatever, I just want to do what I want to do. I'm free. I'm 17. <laughs> Who are you to tell me that? This is what I was thinking. But meanwhile, she is just speaking that truth into my life. And that truth stuck with me throughout the years. It spoke to my conscience and it helped me as God was speaking to me to get me out of that darkness and turn towards the life to turn towards the light, to turn towards Jesus, the way, and to transform my life. She, Grace, was fundamental in that, a fundamental, radical moment of transformation. Although I didn't accept it at the time, it was a transformative event that God used. Whether Grace knew it or not, he was using her to correct me, to change me. She was being a true and real friend, unlike few others that I've had throughout life. She was like what St. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. Grace was not quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone. She was so kindly, so compassionate. I mean, I could just see it in her face. I just, it was difficult for me to even look at her because that kindness was so pure and I was so impure at the time. She was an apt teacher. My teacher was away from the class and she taught me, she schooled me in life, in morality. She was patient, correcting 
opponents with gentleness. That's what Paul says, correcting opponents with gentleness. She was so gentle with me. I was standing as her opponent. And that word in the Greek for opponent is the one who stands against himself. I was standing against myself. I was opposing myself, my true self. Grace was calling me to see who that true self was. She must have known it in some way. That true self that is made in the image and likeness of God, the absolute and infinite self of goodness, of kindness, of faithfulness, gentleness, and love. She must have known that somehow in me. She saw it in some way. God showed it to her, and then she laid down her life for me, speaking that truth, even though I didn't want to hear it. God was using her. As St. Paul says, God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth. Yes, God used her that I repented. I changed my mind. I changed my heart. Well, Jesus did it for me because I, I couldn't do it myself. And the Holy Spirit came in and transformed me. And that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. That's what I was. I thought I was free. I thought I was doing my own thing. I was doing my will, but I was held captive by the enemy. I was a slave to him. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't do anything but go deeper and deeper into darkness. But thank God for grace. Thank you for the mercy that God worked through her. That true friend, that kind friend, that non-quarrelsome friend that was willing to stand against the norms and mores of the world, which says, hey, do what you want. Doesn't matter if you hurt others. Just do what you want. You're free. She didn't worry about ridicule. She stood and loved me purely. I'm, I'm still speechless by it. I'm still so very thankful for her. I could have continued to go down that path. I could, I could have continued to hurt so many people. Thank you, Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit, for grace. Thank you for working through true friends. Thank you, Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit, for working through people who are willing to love even when the world says they are hating, even when the world says they, they are fears, phobics. They're willing to show people love willing to show them, to call them, to see that they are made in the image and likeness of God, to set them free from the path of the devil, to, from the path of self-destruction and the destruction of others. Thank you, Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit, for the grace of true friends, of true brothers and sisters, of true mothers and fathers who will love their children, who will love their brothers and sisters, who will love their friends to see their true selves, to see light, to see love, to see Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit for who they truly are, for who you truly are our Lord, our love, our Abba. I pray for you, my dear brothers and sisters, that you will be these type of friends, like grace. You don't have to correct everyone, but those who you are led to correct in love, without quarreling, you will stand with them. You will continue to be loved to them. You will not abandon them but you will be that true Jesus for them. 
the true friend of Jesus, who is the friend of all humanity, the true friend of Abba, who is the father of all humanity, the true friend of the glorious Holy Spirit, who transforms them day by day, minute by minute, speaking to their conscience, speaking to their life, to be love, to be who they truly are, made in the image and likeness of their best friend.